A Rincon woman is behind bars tonight after police say she shot a Savannah mother and stole her twin babies. It looks like she had been meeting with Facebook on new mothers. Uh, she had set up this meeting. Uh, this has been planned. Tripp says they talked on the phone just an hour before. My mom called me and was like, did you see the news? And I was like, no. And she was like, Gabby got shot. And the boys were taken. I was like, I just talked to her. <laughs> what do you mean? On May 11th, 2021, Gabriel Rogers, a new mom of twins, made the mistake of her life when she agreed to meet up with another woman, Angela Montgomery. After chatting with each other online, what was supposed to be a mommy support group meetup took a very dark turn when Angela Montgomery took out a firearm and fired at Gabrielle. She then took off with Gabrielle's six-week-old twin babies. She was proud. She was happy that she had these boys. She was happy that they were born successfully with no problems. She was just proud to be a mom. At around 10.20 a.m., officers responded to a residence in the 1500 block of NE 36th Street and located Gabrielle Rogers, 23, she had been fired at and was suffering from life-threatening wounds. Emergency quickly attended to Gabrielle and got her stable before she was transported to the hospital for treatment of her critical injuries. The officers began working the scene right after Gabrielle was taken to the hospital. They found that the door had not been broken, into which meant that Gabrielle had invited whoever fired fired at her into the home. This meant that it was either someone she knew beforehand and possibly invited into her home, or it was a stranger who appeared non-threatening enough for her to invite into her home. The officers on the scene also discovered one more thing, something that took the investigation on a whole different route. They discovered that Gabrielle Rogers had just had twin babies, boys, and a search through Gabrielle's house showed the twins were nowhere to be found. They were declared missing. This provided a problem. The officers were not only looking for someone capable of taking someone else's life, but who would take children as well. This opened up the investigations to many possibilities. The first one being Gabrielle's partner and the father of her babies. In incidents like Gabrielle's, the officers typically first look at the romantic partners, especially with the children being taken. There was more of a chance that a disgruntled partner or ex-partner had planned to end Gabrielle's life and take the babies. According to a 2021 study carried out by the Center for Disease Control, 55 percent of homicides relating to women are perpetuated by their partners. Over half of the unalivings of American women are related to their partners, with the vast majority of the victims suffering at the hands of a current or former romantic partner. The CDC analyzed the unalivings of women in 18 states from 2003 to 2014, finding a total of over 10,000. Of those, 55 percent were intimate partner-related, meaning they occurred at the hands of a former or current partner or a partner's family or friends. Add the kidnapping of children to the mix, and the number goes even higher. The report also debunks the Strangers in Dark Alleys narrative common to televised crime dramas. Strangers perpetrated just 16% of all female homicides, fewer than acquaintances, and just slightly more than parents. In the case of Gabrielle Rogers, the officers decided to explore that theory and immediately started investigating, but before they could get anywhere, they got a break in the case. While some officers worked Gabrielle's house trying to look for clues. Others spoke to neighbors who were around at the time of the attack and who saw or heard anything. The officers certainly got a lot of information from the neighbors. Information that would alter led them to a huge break in the case. A few neighbors told the officers they had indeed seen something. They saw a woman fleeing Gabrielle's house with her twin boys, Mateo and Lorenzo, immediately after a loud bang was heard. But that wasn't all. They also told the officers they had seen the woman in question flee with the boys in a white sedan. On Tuesday, police were called to Roger Savannah home on East 36th Street, where they say a woman sh her multiple times and then took off with her six-week-old babies. Armed with the information from the neighbors, it would seem Gabrielle's partner would be off the hook, at least until the detectives gain more information on the case. Detectives in charge of the case worked quickly to gather leads on the suspect, who the neighbors had initially identified only as Kathleen, possibly being in Effingham County. Now, while the detectives were investigating all the Kathleen's Gabrielle could possibly have known or come across, they also asked for 
for help from members of the community asking for tips that could help them catch the Kathleen in question. They posted an alert on their official X, formerly known as Twitter, page with details on the description of the woman they were looking for, as well as the car she was suspected to have been driving. Hashtag SPD alert SPD is looking for a black female, possibly named Kathleen, photo from previous day. She has six-week-old boys named Mato and Lorenzo, who were taken during a shooting on NE 36th Street. She is traveling in a white sedan, possibly a Kia Optima. Anyone with info, call 911. The tweet read, The tagged photos of the twin babies, Mateo and Lorenzo, as well as photos of the possible suspect with a photo of the white sedan. They also sent an alert obtaining similar information to everyone's phone. 26. Week-old twin black males last seen leaving Savannah with a black female driving a white four-door sedan, Nissan Altima or Kia Optima. Members of the community who were on Twitter rushed to respond to the alert on Twitter, saying they hoped the babies would be found soon. Hey, so... Just got the Amber Alert. Hope these kids are returned safely, one person wrote. Just got this? Hopefully they are returned to their parents and also the car is a Kia, another person added. In no time at all, tips started pouring into 911, and some of the tips were very useful and assisted in the speed of the case. Around 2.30 p.m., SPD detectives and SWAT, with assistance from the Rincon Police Department and Effingham County Sheriff's Office, stormed the home of a woman named Angela Kathleen Montgomery. Her residence was on St. Andrews Road in Lost Plantation in Rincon. The twins were also located at the residence, and though they were unharmed and appeared healthy, they were taken to a nearby hospital for medical evaluation to find out whether they were indeed healthy. Once they were determined to be safe and healthy, the Savannah Police Department shared a photo of the babies in an attempt to provide an update for the members of the community via X, formerly known as Twitter. Update. Mato and Lorenzo are safe in the arms of officers after being taken from their home in Savannah earlier today, the tweet began, adding, the suspect is in custody. More details will be available later today. Thank you to everyone who shared our post and called in tips. Members of the community were happy and very relieved that the twin babies were both found and they were unharmed. One X user shared their excitement saying, I am so happy they were found safe and I hope their parents never take their eyes off of them. I am so grateful that some, everyone had their eyes open and they found them. Wow, this is great news. Another X user added, thank you for saving the babies. After receiving dozens of tips from people in the community, police tracked down the suspect, Angela Montgomery, to this house in Rinkin. They were happy to share a picture of the babies after the rescue, showing them unharmed and together. As for Angela Montgomery, detectives said they tracked her down and found her hiding at a home in Rincon with her boyfriend. They say she was found in a closet with the same weapon used to hurt Gabrielle Rogers. She was subsequently arrested and taken into custody. As for the suspect, police say they found her hiding at a home in Rincon with her boyfriend. Miss Montgomery was in a closet. Uh, the victim had been with a 40 caliber pistol. Uh, in the closet with her was a 40 caliber pistol. Savannah PD's chief of police, Roy Minter, also put out a statement on the official website praising the detectives who were in charge of their investigation for their speedy and dedicated efforts to get the babies back home safely as well. As the arrest of Angela Montgomery, what happened today is every mother's worst nightmare. We are so thankful that Mato and Lorenzo were located quickly and were ultimately unharming. This was an all-hands-on-deck approach. Everyone in the Savannah area was looking for the suspect and the twins. The detectives, in this case, worked quickly, tracking down every available lead while working with our local, state, and federal partners. Still, the case would not have moved as swiftly if it had not also been for the community assistance. SPD, and I'm sure the rest of the city, hopes to see the children's mother make a full recovery and be reunited with her sons as soon as possible. That's uh, probably an affirmation of why a lot of people go into law enforcement, right? That they're able to have a, a, an important, play a, an important role in a situation like this and have some kind of positive outcome. Once Montgomery was taken into custody, detectives say she agreed to an interview with them. After Angela Montgomery was taken into custody, she agreed to speak to the detectives in charge without a lawyer present. That is a little unusual, as most people in her shoes would typically ask to speak to a lawyer first so they don't make incriminating statements to the detectives, but not Angela. People mostly agree to speak to detectives with lawyers present if they know they're innocent or if they're trying to appear 
innocent, like they have nothing to hide. Angela Montgomery began by telling the detectives she had a twin sister. She told the detectives her twin sister would sometimes get her in trouble, and that was the case on that fateful day. She recounted the events of May 11th to the officers beginning with her twin sister asking her for help. She revealed that her twin sister had been the one who had gone to Gabriel's home to take the kids, saying she had only come into the picture when Gabriel asked her to take custody of the kids before running off. And that she took possession of the children from this twin sister uh, and then tried to pass them off as her own children. She said after her twin sister dropped the babies off at her home, she had tried to pass on the babies as her own. But upon further investigation, the detectives discovered none of what Angela had told them had been true. She said she was unaware of the crime, that she was assisting her twin sister, which she does not have. To start with, she did not have a twin sister, which meant she was the one who had committed the crime and only sent the detectives on a wild goose chase, probably hoping they wouldn't find out the truth. All through their investigation, folks in the community wondered what the connection between Angela and Gabriel was. Police have not revealed how the women knew each other. The investigation is still ongoing. But people would soon find out how Gabriel came to know Angela enough to invite her into her home, as the detectives found out more in their investigations. Detectives revealing more information about that shooting and twin kidnapping in Savannah Tuesday, including how the suspect, Angela Montgomery, met the victim. The detectives revealed that Gabriel had not known Angela for long. In fact, she met her only a few weeks before the tragic incident. Well, we can't say she met her, because in the true sense of the word, she hadn't met her until that fateful day, but she had been chatting with her online way before then. It was revealed that Angela had sent Gabriel a request on Facebook after finding her on a new mom support group on the app. They had struck up an online friendship before agreeing to meet at Gabriel's home, of course, the entire time. Angela had had other plans in mind and wasn't really looking to be friends. It looked like she had been meeting with Facebook on new mothers. Uh, she had set up this meeting. Uh, this had been planned. It was also discovered that Gabriel hadn't been the only one Angela was chatting with on the app. According to the detectives, she had chatted up many new mothers who had been part of that support group. It just so happened that Gabriel was the one she connected with the most. If she hadn't been captured, she might have gone back on the app and tried to trick other new mothers into trusting her and inviting her into their homes. The detectives also provided an update on Gabriel's condition, saying she was in critical condition, but was stable and responding to treatment, and they hoped she would make a speedy recovery. Detective Patrick Skinner said the suspect shot the victim in the head and chest. Rogers was listed in serious but stable condition late Wednesday. Gabriel's case opened the eyes of many people to the dangers of oversharing online and agreeing to meet up with people you didn't know. Gabrielle's story is actually very common. In a post-pandemic world where many adults and children spend excessive time online, predators and kidnappers are now a greater danger than ever before. Using social media platforms and other internet resources, these criminals can locate and target anyone who has left a digital paper trail for them to follow especially on apps like Facebook. For people born over the last three decades, Facebook has become a pretty common part of everyday life. It can be easy to forget just how much information there is about you on the platform and what kind of consequences that may lead to. The consequences are so severe on Facebook that a term has even been coined to describe it, Facebook stalking. Now, although Facebook stalking has become a catch-all term for too much scrolling on a person's account, it's important to be aware that the stalking part is no joke and poses a threat to millions of people worldwide. Social media kidnapping statistics indicate that people who take children from their families would prefer doing it online since the risk of immediate detection by law enforcement is much lower than it is when they carry out such acts in person. And believe it or not, when it comes to babies, parents are the ones that get them into such situations more often than not. According to statistics, by the time they turn two, 90% of toddlers will have some kind of social media presence. And that's not because they have somehow managed to bypass social media age restrictions, but rather because of their parents' tendency to overshare. It's normal to want to share cute photos of your baby, especially as a new parent. The whole experience is pretty new, and most new parents find comfort and information online, leading to many new mom groups being created online. But unfortunately, as innocent as those groups sound, they are strangers lurking in the shadows trying to take advantage of trusting parents.
parents. According to statistics, 56% of parents share potentially embarrassing information about their children online. It's even called sharenting. A study by the University of Michigan that explored sharenting, which means parents sharing pictures of their children on social media platforms, further found that 51% of parents provide details that could result in potentially dangerous people being able to figure out their location. Another 27% shared inappropriate pictures. These figures show that parents need to educate themselves on how to behave in the digital space when it comes to sharing content that involves their children. The world is getting increasingly dangerous by the day, and loads of people are taking advantage of innocent media platforms to perpetuate their crimes. So if you want to keep your babies safe, it's important that you are more selective of what you share online. Set limitations on who can view pictures of your children, and never disclose their location. Gabrielle's case also helped shed light on the fact that a lot of these people who take children are women. Research shows that many of the perpetrators are females who appear non-threatening, and some of them even have children of their own, and use photos of their children or other photos they find online to make other women feel safer with them. Most mothers are more likely to trust women with children and older women than they are to trust younger women with no children or even men. In some similar cases to Gabrielle's, the criminals were found to be part of virtual adoption agencies where prospective mothers bid on photos. But in the case of Angela Montgomery, the detectives were still working on figuring out the motive. As for the investigation, officers are still trying to determine a motive. Though Angela was quick to spin a web of lies in her favor to try to get the detectives off her scent, she was not very forthcoming when it came to why she chose to attack Gabrielle Rogers. So that's going to be part, again, a part of the follow-up, trying to understand, you know, not just what happened, but why it happened, how it unfolded. The woman accused of a Savannah mother, then kidnapping her twin babies, going before a judge today. In the meantime, while the investigation progressed, Angela Montgomery was arraigned in court to determine whether or not she would be released on bond. She was denied bond. Miss Montgomery. Your bond is denied. The suspect, Angela Montgomery, was denied bond after detectives revealed new information. The suspect, Angela Montgomery, was denied bond today. This after detectives revealed new information. The detectives revealed to the court that Angela Montgomery had been calculated in her actions. They told the court she had joined a new mom support group online and had been communicating with several mothers on Facebook, one of whom was Gabrielle Rogers. They told the court she had set up the meeting, which led to her critically wounding Gabrielle Gabrielle Rogers and running away with her babies. The detectives also shared with the court Angela's attempt to deceive them by telling them many lies and sending them to dead ends. At the end of the hearing, after the bond denied Angela's bond, her attorney requested that she undergo a mental health evaluation. At the end of Wednesday's court hearing, Montgomery's attorney requested that she undergo a mental health evaluation. The aim was to determine if Angela was fit to stand trial, especially because she wasn't given the detectives anything that could help them determine a motive. But the investigation was still ongoing, so members of the community held out hope that they would soon be able to understand while this tragic event took place. As the investigation progressed, it's also possible that new charges would be announced, especially in relation to Angela's boyfriend, who was also found at the same home with the twins. Now, Brooke, you said the suspect was found at a home with her boyfriend, so can we expect more arrests? As Shannon police say they still need to investigate more, but they say it's very possible. Angela Montgomery is being held without bond. She is due back in court on July 8th. Gabrielle's friends and family, however, are holding out hope for Gabrielle's recovery so she can get back to taking care of her beautiful boys. One of her friends told news agencies that Gabrielle loved her boys and had been very excited when she found out she was having them despite an already packed schedule. Jamari Tripp says his best friend Gabby Rogers was excited excited to become a mom, even while juggling work and a master's degree. In April, she gave birth to two healthy twin boys, Mateo and Lorenzo. The friend said Gabrielle was proud to be a mom and was beyond happy when her twins were born. She was proud. She was happy that she had these boys. She was happy that they were born successfully with no problems. She was just proud to be a mom. The friend also said he was sure that Gabrielle didn't go down easy and did everything she could to protect her boys. She would do anything for those boys, so I know Gabby put up a fight trying to protect those boys. He also recounted how shocked he was to find out Gabrielle had been attacked when he had just spoken to her shortly before. Tripp says they talked on the phone just an hour before. My mom called me and was like, did you see the news? And I was like, no. And she was like, Gabby got 
and the boys were taken. I was like, I just taught her. <laughs> what do you mean? As for Angela Montgomery, news agencies also talk to her neighbors who recall her as being quiet and giving them no problems. Very nice interactions. No problems wouldn't put them at all. The neighbors also said Angela lived in her house with her husband and some children. It's unclear at this point if the children belong to her or not. Steve Villani says this Rinkin neighborhood is quiet. He says Montgomery lived across the street with her husband and a few other kids. Gabriel's family also set up a GoFundMe account to help pay her hospital bills and care for the boys. Police say Rogers is in serious but stable condition tonight. Rogers' sister has set up a GoFundMe account to help support the boys. In the caption for the GoFundMe, Gabriel's sister gave an account of what happened to her sister and pleaded with people to help their family. Hello everyone, my name is Brianna Young. I am the oldest sister of Gabriel Rogers and the aunt of Lorenzo and Matteo. Tuesday of May 11, 2021, my sister was multiple times and my nephews were kidnapped. Thankfully, God was watching over all three by the boys being found within four or five H8Rs by Savannah Police Dept and my sister undergoing surgeries to prayerfully reach 100% recovery soon. As we are praying, we ask if you may also pray for a speedy recovery to 100%. If there is anything you can donate, we greatly appreciate your prayers as well as donations. Your donations are truly a blessing, which will be going towards her medical bills, diapers, milk, etc. Thank you very much. God bless. As of the time of the making of this video, the GoFundMe has raised more than $19,000. Thankfully, Gabrielle was able to make a full recovery and go back home with her two boys. As for Angela, she was evaluated by a mental health professional at the request of her lawyer. She ended up pleading guilty to three charges, but added that she was mentally ill. It is unclear if she will be serving her sentence in a mental health facility or prison. Hey, thanks for watching. We honor those affected by this tragedy and welcome your response respectful thoughts and reflections. Do you know of other similar cases? Let me know in a comment. And before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell button.